Please be seated. The court is back in session. So who is going to take the floor first? The co-prosecutor first. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just wanted to correct, uh, some, for the record, something that was stated by counsel uh, before the break. Uh, he indicated that uh, civil party applications were not provided under oath. Uh, I apologize for not getting up earlier, but the, the two that were on the screen were in French, and I was looking for an English version just to correct, uh, confirm my understanding. But in, in fact, in Section D of the civil party applications, uh, where they place their signature, uh, uh, they declare specifically that, to the best of my knowledge and belief, the information I have given in the present form is correct. Otherwise, I will be liable under the applicable law. This is certainly some form of oath, uh, so I think it is incorrect to assert that these statements are not provided under oath. Uh, and uh, aside from that point, uh, we certainly support uh, the civil party's use of these statements. This seems to us to be the role that they uh, serve in these proceedings. Uh, the defense, including the Nunche defense, have been allowed uh, to do this with statements of other witnesses uh, where they are not going to appear to testify. Uh, certainly, uh, all 4,000 civil parties are not going to be able to appear to testify here. And therefore, it seems to us that uh, where there is matters within uh, the knowledge of a witness, such as in this case where we have uh, someone who has come in and make, made assertions uh, that there were no forced marriages, that there was plenty of medicine, <clears throat> and other assertions regarding the conditions in Mondalkiri uh, sector, it seems to us entirely appropriate that he be confronted uh, with the voices of the victims from that region. Uh, so for those reasons, we would support uh, the civil party's use of these documents. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, let me first address uh, the prosecutor's remarks. Uh, an affirmation is not an oath. He ought to know better, uh, at least with the statements or the summaries of the statements that we get from the OCIJ. There we have a judicial officer who is taking a statement, turning it into a summary, giving it, and then it is uh, thumbprinted or signed under oath. So there is a vast difference between one and the other. Uh, so that's first and foremost. Uh, our position is rather pr uh, one of principle, and that is if you're going to use this sort of a statement that was made for the purposes of becoming a civil party and where that individual has a vested interest in becoming a civil party, one cannot just ipso facto say, well, it was given in earnest. That earnesty has to be demonstrated through a process of confrontation if it's necessary. In this instance, these statements are, are being used in order to impeach this particular witness and in one of them, D22-2760 on page 5 in Khmer, it clearly implicates the witness himself. In other words, the civil party is using, the civil party lawyer is using a statement from a civil party in order to implicate and treat the witness as an accused, something which, uh, Mr. President, you have advised all of us not to to do so in this uh, in this court, so we do think that there is a vast difference. Our position, to be quite frankly, is as follows: We need a set of guidelines and rules that are going to be followed universally throughout the trial. We do not think that these sorts of statements ought to be coming in unless the witness or the civil party is going to be testifying. Of course, if you tend to think that they need to be heard, the, vo the voices of the civil parties need to be heard, and we don't object to that, then obviously we want it stated loud and clear that very little weight, if any, will be given to such statements 
unless they're corroborated by independent indicia. Sim- plain and simple. But to simply say that one person had this experience and therefore that's how it was in this region or that area is insufficient unless we hear other evidence that would support that. And thus the civil party statement is something that is used to supplement as opposed to used to actually prove. Thank you. Mr. President, yes, uh, Council, you may proceed. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Very quickly, in order to illustrate what my esteemed colleague has just said, two of the civil parties who were quoted by Council Simono Fort just earlier on. Are people who have lodged complaints against this very witness? This effectively gives rise to a problem, and I think such a problem needs to be resolved. So much so that our other esteemed colleague has said that those two individuals are not on the list of civil parties who are to appear before this chamber. Yes, uh, national lead co lawyers for civil parties. Please be reminded that you are not supposed to touch upon the same issue. It is strange that the chamber has discussed this issue and is about to rule on the matter, and our parties stand up. to talk about this same issue. But the Chamber is also interested in hearing the arguments made by the parties. It is also surprising that the parties did not stand up right after the document was referred to. The Chamber has indicated time and again that if any party wishes to oppose to the document being referred to, that party should make the point straight away before the chamber can rule on the matter. Besides, A party can only oppose to the matter once, and once the matter has been ruled on, the matter cannot be revisited, cannot be revisited. So uh, please be informed and not to confuse the proceedings. National Council for Civil Parties. Good morning, uh, Mr. President. Good morning, uh, Your Honours, and good morning, everyone. I am on my feet. It's not to respond uh, to what has been raised by the two defence teams. Rather, I am to respond to them, especially to Councillor Canovas, who said that the statement of this civil party was not made before the official of the co-investigating, the office of the co-investigating judges. To respond to this matter, I would like to state that civil parties are not obliged to take an oath, as already been stipulated by Internal Rule 23 concerning the participation of civil parties. Therefore, the statement of the civil party can be part of the evidence for the chamber to consider. In this regard, 
is the argument that the civil party did not take an oath cannot be taken into account. Secondly, as indicated in the civil party victim information form, the information is not intended to incriminate the witness. We have been trying only to elicit information from the witness. This is our technique. As well, in the victim information form, civil party has indicated that he or she wishes to apply as a civil party and he or she does not intend to accuse this witness. Everything has been said clearly in the victim information form. Thank you, Mr. President. The President, now that the Chamber has heard from the parties concerning the extract from the civil party victim information form, uh, the Chamber will decide on this matter in due course. Next, the Chamber would like to inform lead co-lawyers that the Chamber has heard a lot about the information concerning the background of Democratic Campuchia. So, Civil Party lawyers are reminded not to go into this matter in more detail in order not to waste any more time. Civil Party councils are advised to move on to other matters concerning the administrative structure, either at the local level or the upper level. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. This witness, if I'm not mistaken, is being questioned on the totality of all subjects that are being treated within the scope of case one. I therefore would like to ask questions relative to all subjects that fall within the scope of the first trial. I talked about the transfer of people, cooperatives. I also wish to address the issue of elimination of individuals within security centers. I'll go through that very briefly. I also wish to touch upon religious persecution and marriage. I would hope to carry out my duties as counsel for civil party and ask the relevant questions. Do I have your authorization to do so, Mr. President? The President, I have already informed you that this morning you can question this witness concerning case Rosal 2, and you should be aware that the facts in case Rosal 2 are far different from case Rosal 2 slash 01. But the facts that happened in sector 105 are not set out in the closing order. Only the facts in Tramka, in Takao province, was set out in the closing order. So you are supposed to ask questions concerning Tramka cooperative. If you have, if you are of the view that there are facts set out concerning the sector in Mandulkiri, you are supposed to identify the portion 
or the paragraph in the closing order for the chamber. Very well, Mr. President. I shall ask some questions with respect to Security Center in Phnom Khan, which I believe does fall within the scope of case 002-1. With respect to disappearances, Mr. Witness, you testified in response to the co-prosecutor's question that you received a list of prisoners at S21 on the 23rd of December and that you weren't aware of the demise of those at S21. Did you see or hear about people who were arrested and then led either by foot or lorry to a destination unbeknownst to you? Response, I do not know about that. Mr. President, Mr. President, do I have your leave to quote a passage from T D22, 2076, which are the statements of an individual regarding those who were sent to S21? The French ERN pages are 678. And in Khmer, 0055653200556544. Do I have leave from the chamber to quote from this document? The President, can you identify the title of the document? Le document est une déclaration. Yes, indeed, it is a statement of a civil party, D22/2796, for the record. You may proceed. Even though the chamber has been seized with objections from the defense, but the chamber will decide on the matter in due course. The chamber would like to inform civil party council as well that the documents that you are are uh, referring to now has little property value. Thank you, Mr. President. I will therefore go ahead and read from the references that I indicated earlier. Unfortunately, I do not have the reference in English. This civil party writes as follows. At the 
end of 1975, I drove a truck that was full of men and women who were considered traitors to the nation. I drove them to Cartier province. When we arrived at Tmakre commune in the Cartier district in the province of Cartier, there were boats waiting for us to continue them on their journey. I do not know where they were led. I only heard that they were taken for re-education. They've disappeared since then. We never saw them come back. Following that, the witness goes on to say, since 1978, I was sent to work as a driver, as I had done in the past. The chief of the Commerce Bureau said, you cannot do anything other than repair old motor vehicles. At that point, there were two trucks made in China that were used for transporting many people who were accused as being traitors by Pol Pot's clique. Those people were sent by those trucks for execution in Phnom Kral, five kilometers away from Konek district. Every day in the morning, the two trucks came to take 10 or more people and returned without the people about an hour later." End of quote. Mr. Witness, does this refresh your memory with respect to any scenes that you may have witnessed? My answer is that I do not know about that. In 1975, I did not hear or see this. Thank you, Mr. Witness. I have a second question with respect to Phnom Kual, and then I'll have a few questions for you with respect to forced marriage, which falls well within the scope of case 002. Now, returning to Phnom Kual, I wish to draw this chamber's reference, uh, attention to E3 slash 403. On page 5 of the French version, ERN in Khmer, 00398989. ERN in English, 00403027. Mr. President, do I have your leave to make reference to this document and to have it projected? on the screen. Running out. You may proceed. Je vous remercie. À la... Thank you very much. Now, in response to the following question, when you took control of Region 105, was the Phnom Kral Security Detention Center still in operation? You answered, Mr. Witness. Yes, it was operating normally. And you added, we did not arrest anyone. May I ask you, Mr. Witness, if that means that the security center was operating as per usual? No. I said that to the co-prosecutors when I said it was uh, functioning as usual it means that there was no arrest Je vous remercie. Thank you witness Mr. President May I please quote from D22 slash 452, which once again is a civil party statement that bears the following ERN numbers. In French, they are 00 81451, and in Khmer, 00 
zero zero five eight zero nine seven seven. I wish to draw upon supplementary information as provided for by this individual who speaks about Panom Kual. You may proceed. Je vous remercie. Thank you very much. This particular civil party is a woman who was 24 years of age in 1975. She writes as follows. My husband, and I'll refrain from stating the name, was sent to K-17 that was close to Crowell Mountain. This was very close to the security detention center. I'll just skip a paragraph, and she writes further on by saying, now at K-17, there was also K-11, which was reserved for the unit responsible for carrying out heavy tasks and laborious tasks, such as building dams. I was sometimes sent to work there, along with people from K-11. I saw people being arrested. I saw people being shackled. I saw people being lined up and led away. Mr. Witness, does this refresh your memory with respect to Phnom Kral Security Center, which was not far from the district office? But, as I already said, I did not see, I did not hear about people being arrested to the security center. Je vous remercie. J'ai enfin... Thank you. I have one final question with respect to forced marriage. In fact, this is a follow-up question to one that was posed by the co-prosecutor, as well as in follow-up to a question asked by my fellow colleague this morning. Mr. Witness, you said on several occasions that consent was required when it came to marriages. Mr. President, may I please make reference to a civil party statement which should perhaps allow for the witness to refresh his memory with respect to forced marriages. I wish to refer to D22-1433, the French ERN numbers are 0081144 in Khmer, the ERNs are 00585090. Do I have the Chamber's leave to quote from these particular documents? C'est donc la déclaration. It is indeed a statement given by a civil party who is a man who died in. Oh. This is what the witness said. In fact, in 1978, while on assignment on Crow Mountain, I was in charge of cutting wood. The head of the unit, Rin, forced me to marry Ain who was from the same ethnic group as myself. I was very afraid and I could not contest the order because anyone who challenged an order was arrested. During the wedding, there were 18 couples who stood in two rows. Each person had to declare their consent to the marriage. Witness, does this refresh your memory regarding forced marriages in your sector? Matt, could you Response.
1975, I was at the district. But so far as I remember, there is no such forced marriage. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le témoin. Je regrette. Thank you, witness. I regret not having been able to refresh your memory on some important points. Let me point out that the civil party statements I used today were given by people who lived in sector 105. Although I chose only a few extracts, they all deal with the policies of democratic Cambodia. I thank you. The President, thank you. Next, uh, I would like to know whether fellow judges of the bench would like to put any questions to the witness. Judge Lavagne, you may now proceed. Oui, merci, Monsieur. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, witness. First of all, witness, I hope I wouldn't uh, mispronounce your name. Can you please tell me, therefore, whether your name is pronounced as Sao Sarun or So Sarun? Matt. Response. My name is Sao Sarun. Alors, Monsieur le témoin, on a... Witness. We have spoken at length about arrests that occurred in Sector 105 and in Division 920. Before putting questions to you, I would like to note some points. Re referring to Document D 288-6.61.1, Annex 1, and Document D 80, Annex A. These are both documents dealing with lists of persons arrested and sent to S21. These lists show that the total number of uh, people arrested uh, who are from Sector 105 and Division 100 and 920, we have a total of 318 prisoners. There's another document that was referred to, and it is document, the document referring to list of prisoners who arrived at S21 on the 23rd of November, 1977. And these persons were either from Division 920 or Sector 105. And on the 23rd of November alone, that 23rd of November, 1977, the number of detainees is 151. This is document D75 slash 3 slash 31. These are figures that only concern S21 and they do not concern the security centers that may have existed in sector 105. First of all, regarding questions dealing with the administrative structure of Sector 105. Len was referred to as the Secretary of Sector 105. Can you please tell me whether Len had another name? Madam Junior. Response. I have never remembered uh, knowing the person other than Lang. Que si je vous... If I were to tell you that that person's name could have been Ham and that he may have also used the alias Chan do these names, Ham and Chan, mean anything to you? Bad response. I don't know.
on a, on vous a entendu, vous... We heard your testimony and you said you were in charge of the committee that was uh, responsible for health issues in the sector. Can you tell us whether in your capacity you had any meetings with Leng or any other members of sector 105, sector 105? Response. It is correct that uh, the meeting in the meeting there was a discussion on how to promote medical services and hospitals and that uh, when patients uh, were sent in then the, we were asked to, to take good care of them and that's part of my role. Vous nous avez également dit you also stated that Leng left with Kampun in late 1977 to Phnom Penh. Can you tell us whether after the disappearance of Leng, another person was appointed to head sector 105 before you were appointed to head that sector? Autrement dit, entre vous. In other words, between you and Leng, was anybody appointed to head sector 105? And if yes, who was that person? But at the response, no, there was no other person appointed uh, in between. When do you consider that you effectively became responsible for activities in sector 105? Was it immediately after your return from Phnom Penh, that is after the death of Leng, or later on? Kim? Response. I resumed my role as the secretary of the sector in the aftermath of Lane's death. It was in September 1978. Qui alors avait en Who was therefore in charge of sector 105 between the beginning of the year 1978 and September 1978? Response, I don't know. Monsieur le témoin. Witness, please tell us, were you asked to send telegrams regularly to Office 870 to Brother Number 2 or other persons when you were appointed to head that sector? Were you told that you would be requested to send telegrams and also to receive them? Response. I would report directly to Pol Pot. Now, regarding 
those reports and correspondences we have a large number of telegrams telegrams that were exchanged between Leng and Phnom Penh for instance we have telegram number three addressed to the beloved and the beloved brother in October it was sent to brother Noon a copy of that document was sent to brother Noon it's document E3 slash 1089 we have telegram of the 12th of October 1976 sent to the dear and beloved comrade it was sent as a copy to brother Noon to the Office and the archives is document E3 slash 1011. In this telegram, Leng said he had changed names and he was now known as Comrade Chang. We have telegram number three of the 15th of October 1976 sent to beloved Comrade Dunn. A copy of that telegram was sent to Brother Noon the office and the archives is document D 366 slash 6.1.780 we have telegram number 10 of the 18th of October 1976 this telegram was sent to the dear beloved brother and a copy of that document was sent to brother Noon to the office and archives and it is document D248 slash 5.1 1.2.12 Telegram number 3 of the 6th November of November 1976 sent to Brother Noon and that is document D 252 slash 2.2 We have telegram number 22 of the 27th of September sent to their comrade and was sent to Brother Noon the office and, and the archives document D366 slash 7.1.785 we have telegram number 33 of the 26th of November 1976 sent to office 870 to the beloved a copy was sent to brother Noon to, and to brother Kiel to office and the archives we have the telegram of the 20th of May 1977 sent to the respected and beloved office 870 and it is document IS 21.17 in this document in this telegram reference is made to a series of arrests in division 920 reference is also made to the names Som and Chin who are contemptuous and a report is also sent to comrade San when you met Len Chan did you did he tell you that he was in touch with brother Noon and other persons in Phnom Penh Mark. response When Talang was still in charge, I have I had no idea where he would send the messages. I took office in 1978 only, and I have no knowledge of what had happened before that. Alors pour les besoins du transcript. For the record, I think I forgot to give the references of one document, and this is uh, telegram number 33, dated 26th of November 1976, addressed to Office 870 Beloved. It is document D366-7.1.785. Mr. Sao Sarun, did you hear the names? Sao Kim An, alias May, 
Chan, Pak and Lok, who were members of Sector 105. Do these names ring a bell to you? Man. Response, yes, they did. Savez-vous ce qu'il est? Do you know what happened to those persons? What became of them? Response, no, I don't. I don't know what happened to them. Bien, passons à une autre série de questions. Well, let us go into another line of questioning regarding the military structure, and in particular, Division 920. Do you remember the name of the secretary of Division 920 before the person called Sun was appointed? Do you know who headed Division 920? Response. No, I don't. I worked at the district. Vous étiez en charge du district de. You were in charge of Pechenda district, and if I am not mistaken, there were a number of soldiers from Division 920 who were stationed in your district. Is that correct? But Response. As already <coughs> testified before the co-investigating judges, yes, it is correct. Alors, est-ce que le nom de Meng... Does the name Meng Meng, alias Chin, ring a bell? But at the Response, no, I don't know this person. Alors, pouvez-vous me dire quel était le nom de la personne? Now, can you tell us who was the person who was head of Division 920 before the person called Sun was appointed? Response, no, I don't know. Est-ce que vous avez entendu prononcer le nom? Did you hear anyone call the name Siachoy alias Soy, alias Che, or alias Soy? Could that person have been the assistant to the secretary of Division 920? Response: No, I don't know much about uh, this because it uh, was relevant to the military section which is not part of my business. Alors, est-ce que vous pouvez nous parler de Can you now tell us about Sun? Is that someone you met? But I don't you Response San was the head of the division. Est-ce que San est toujours. Is San still alive? Ate. Response No, he isn't. He's deceased. Est-ce que San a un rapport avec Nen? Is San related to Nem San, who is referred to, who was referred to in the trial held in 1997, in which Pol Pot and a number of persons were tried?
but response. I don't know anything about uh, Pol Pot's trial. Vous n'avez pas habité à Anlongveng? Did you not reside in Anlongveng? But you know the way. Response: Yes. Et vous n'avez jamais entendu parler du procès de Pol Pot? And you never heard of the Pol Pot trial? But I do. Response: No, I haven't. Bien. Alors, nous avons. Very well. We have on record a number of documents regarding correspondences between the Chief of Staff and Division 920, as well as telegrams exchanged between Division 920 and a number of persons. The first document having to do with relations between the General Staff and Division 920 is IS 13.40, and it is the minutes of the meeting of Division 920, yeah. Super Comrade Soy and Ren, dated 16th of December 1976. In this document, we find instructions on the manner in which enemies should be dealt with regarding element, uh, uh, telegrams. We have a telegram which contains directives from Brother Kiel. Uh, and it was drafted in 1976, and it was sent to Brother 89, Brother Son, Brother Nat, and the archives. And his document D288-5.1.11, we also have telegram number two from of the 26th of November 1976, addressed by Chin to the beloved brother 89 and copied to brother 89, brother 81, brother Som, brother Nat, brother Ren, and the archives. This is document D248 slash 5.1.8. We have telegram number 11 of the 6th of April 1977 addressed by Sun to the highly respected and beloved Brother 89. This telegram was copied to Brother 89, Brother 81, to the office and the archives, and it is document D366-7.1.791. In this document, there are two handwritten annotations that state as follows to Ankar for information purposes and to be arrested. We have telegram number five of the 9th of June, 1977, to beloved brother 89, Son Sen, and copied to brother 89, to the office and archives, and it is document D. 248-5.1.1. Regarding your relations with Sun, Mr. Witness, unless I am mistaken, you did acknowledge having held meetings with him, and you also indicated that during those meetings, Sun came with lists of persons and it appears that those persons had to be arrested. Is this something you would confirm, and are you in a position to provide further explanations on what Sun did? <coughs> that response. With regard to the
the messages and how they were sent or whether they were sent or not I don't know because I was at the district I, I don't know anything about this Monsieur témoin, j'ai peur que vous ne m'ayez pas compris. Witness, I don't think you understood my question. I wasn't talking of messages. I was talking of meetings during which you met Sun and during which Sun brought lists of persons who had to be arrested. Do you remember attending any meetings with Sun? And do you recall whether Sun brought lists of persons? to be arrested. Response. There was a meeting. However, I have knowledge, no knowledge of such a list being discussed in the meeting, the list of people to be arrested because it was never been brought up. Alors, abordons maintenant. Very well. Let us now talk of security centers. I'll put a few questions to you very quickly. We have spoken at length about Sopia. Is it correct to say that Sopia was the head of the network of security centers for sector 105? which included the Crow, K11, K17, and possibly other centers. Is that the truth? Bad response. Yes, it is. And I also stated this uh, before the co-investigating judges. Est-ce que SOPA avait un adjoint was Sopea assisted by a person called Yen alias Kam? Admin Day. No. Wien was with the military section. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous parler de Can you tell us something about Sao Champi alias Non? Who was Sao Champi alias Mum? Ma Sao Champi alias Mum. This is one person only. Qui était cette personne? Who is this person relative to your position, Mr. Witness? He is my younger sibling. Vous aviez des contacts? Did you have any contact with him? We had usual context as siblings. What were his duties? He was a member of a regiment. Alors, je vais donner lecture. Allow me to read a passage from document D. 125 slash 155. This has already been admitted before the chamber. It also bears the 
Reference number E3506, the ERN in Khmer is 00 23 99 21 to 00 23 ERNs in English are 00 24 44 84 to 00 your brother stated as follows with respect to his duties. From 1975 to 1979, I was responsible for one of the three companies of the second battalion in Region 105. The leader of that battalion was called Lang, and he was arrested. Lang led a company, Lang alias Kam, who died after 1979. Lang and I were responsible for defending the border region. Lang was positioned in Usra, in the Chenda district. I was assigned to Doreng. As for our daily work, I sometimes attended regional meetings that were held in Kopnyek district along with Kopiak and Lang. Later on, I also attended meetings with Saron, Talok, Taun Si. And during those meetings, we talked about Vietnamese enemies. We talked about the defense of the border against Vietnamese invaders. Mr. Witness, is this consistent with the facts at the time? Yes, it is correct. But I do not know about the meeting with Talang. But as for the meeting that I attended, it is true as such. That is to discuss about Vietnamese attack. Un peu plus loin. Further on in the document, you were asked, what did you know about the detention center at Phnom Kral? Answer. Lang was responsible for managing the prison. I do not know who the Talang's subordinates were. Talang was from Retanaki province. I reserved that under Tasopia's order and following the report from the base, Tasopia would give orders to Talang personally, or he probably issued an order by letter or messenger. I do not know Tasopia's messenger. I never received any order to arrest or receive any prisoner. The prison supervised by Talang's company was located about one kilometer to the east of Phnom Kual. That prison was constructed on the ground with a thatch roof. I do not remember the number of rows or buildings. Based on my memory, it was surrounded by wooden fence. I never entered into that prison compound. I saw the prisoners bathing and doing labor, such as clearing the grass, sawing wood, the prisoners wore ordinary clothes and they were men and women. There were no children prisoners. The prisoners were probably shackled while they were in the prison. I do not know about the category of prisoners, but the arrestees were all those who had committed something wrong. In each of their meetings held about once a month, Leng Sopia, and Leng is spelt L-E-N-G, who was the secretary of uh, District 105, and Sarun. They often talked about the principles of not making any contact with the Vietnamese or acting freely, such as being less active in 
their work. And those who did were considered enemies. Therefore, I observed that those prisoners had probably violated the above principles. And therefore, Mr. Witness, is what I just read to you consistent and an accurate reflection of your memory? Bad gum. I uh, do not know about that matter concerning about the meeting of the number of prisoners. I was in the district, so I was not aware of anything that happened in the sector. No, the, the president. Uh, judge, uh, do you still have a lot of questions left? No, never mind, no, did. How many more questions do you still have? I have one remaining question to ask the witness, Mr. President if you would be so obliging. Yes, uh, you can ask it now. Il s'agit uh, d'une question... I have a follow-up question regarding a telegram that you confirmed as being the author. These are telegrams 54 and 55, documents E3 slash 941 and E3 slash 498. These telegrams were sent in copy to Uncle Noon, Uncle Van, Uncle Vaughn, to the office and to documentation. My question is very simple and straightforward. Mr. Witness, when you were addressing a telegram to beloved brother, since that was the habitual salutation. Did you also send copies to Yang Sari, Uncle Van, brother number two, Mr. Nun Chen, Von Vett, the office, and documentation? Were you aware of that? Not, no. Response. It is like what I told the co-investigating judges. I wrote that too. But I did not mention the names of, for example, Warren Vade. I only wrote to Pol Pot. I did write that. Yeah, je vous remercie. Je n'ai pas... Thank you very much. I have no further questions to put to the witness, Mr. President. The President, thank you. We are a bit beyond the time. Uh, before we take the break, the Chamber wishes to ask a witness, Asal Sarun, based on your health condition, do you think you can continue your testimony during the afternoon session? Oh, uh, yes, I can continue, Your Honours. President, thank you. Yes, uh, Defence Counsel for Mr. Nguyen you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, my client, Mr. Nguyen Chie, would like to follow the proceedings from the holding cell this afternoon, and we have the waiver prepared. President, it is now appropriate for us to adjourn for lunch break. We will a break until 1.30 in the afternoon. Court officer is instructed to provide accommodation to Mr. Witness and his duty counsel and return them by the time stated. The chamber has been seized with the request of Mr. Nguyen Chie made through his counsel to follow the proceedings 
during the afternoon session by waiving his rights to be present in the courtroom. The defense counsel has promised to submit the written waiver with a signature or thumbprint of the accused known chair. The accused asked to follow the proceeding from a holding cell downstairs by waiving his rights to be present in this courtroom. The chamber requires that the defense counsel submit the written waiver with the accused thumbprint or signature to the chamber so that the accused person can follow the proceeding from the holding cell downstairs remotely through also visual means. Security guards are now instructed to take the two accused persons to the holding cells downstairs and to keep Mr. Nunchia there for him to follow remotely and to bring Mr. Kilson Pond to this courtroom by 1.30. The court is now adjourned. All rise.